Well, I've never taken it, so I can't really speak to its potency. No, no, me either. I know lots of people that have, though. You haven't? I have not, ever. You don't have to brag about it. <laughs> that I haven't? Or? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Salazar. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. Okay, we got a great journal club today. It's a okay. point counterpoint. Right, and it really um, illustrates, like we were talking about before, how when you look at scientific research or the literature or whatever you want to call it, how, yeah. how one minute it's like, hey, this clearly is the right answer, and then next week someone comes up and says, clearly that's not the answer. See, we have to be really careful. Yes. Please, please, if you're one of our viewers, don't ever utter the words that the science says, okay? Don't ever say the science says because the science doesn't just say one thing. Right. A term coined by politicians during, you know what, pandemic that just happened, the politicians love to say the science says. The science doesn't say stuff, it debates stuff, it offers information, right? and it's open for debate. And, and we can say the literature appears to show, yes. or thus far, because yes. usually most articles end with, hey, further research needs to be done. Almost nothing is conclusive. Yes, every article ends with, well, we need more research to yeah. show something. And here's a perfect example of two great pieces of science that say two different things. And interestingly, we actually had already filmed one of the videos, and before we could produce and release it, the second one came out that essentially went against what we were saying in the first one. So we're redoing it now, yeah. showing point, counterpoint. But it's really interesting topic, so here we go. Does <clears throat> Viagra reduce the chance of getting Alzheimer's dementia? Okay, and this is actually a, a very interesting example of how a medication that was designed for one thing ends up being used for another thing and then potentially changes another health outcome. So Re repurposing, repurposing yes. the drug. And why it's so interesting is because Viagra itself was not designed for what it's currently used for most of the time, that is to treat erectile dysfunction. Right, so its effect on blood vessels was, was used for, the, originally thought for high blood pressure and angina. Chest pain, right? To treat high blood pressure and chest pain. I guess they found, well, patients still got chest pain and high blood pressure, but they're super happy. What's going on here? Right. So what they did notice is that, yes, it, it created erections in a lot of the patients um, in 30 to 60 minutes. And the two guys that invented it, Peter Dunn and Albert Wood, thought, hey, let's market this. And actually, it was patented very quickly, 1996, and it was approved by the FDA in less than two years, which is apparently unheard of. Yeah, it's like, hey, we got a drug that cures cancer, and we got this that treats erectile dysfunction. Shelve the cancer one, give me the erectile dysfunction one. And in its first year, a pill that cost between eight and ten dollars did a billion dollars worth of sales. All right, that's a lot of money. Right. Okay. So focusing back on the articles that we're Shows talking where about, our society's mind is sad a little bit. Okay. So the first article that we're going to look at is called endophenotype based in silico network medicine discovery combined with insurance record data mining identifies sildenafil which is viagra right. as a candidate drug for alzheimer's disease right do you like that title i hate that title because it's so long it provides a lot of information but it, it's a bit confusing to the average reader and well, this reader but well, what's exciting about it is anything that can reduce the burden of of dementia and Alzheimer's on the individual as well as their caregivers and society in general is going to be game changer for us. Yeah, and it's published in Nature Aging, great okay. journal. We keep that in the washroom next to the toilet. So, Nature Aging published this article yes. that says, hey, does Viagra help stop Alzheimer's disease from coming on, which is the most common cause of dementia, right. which is important for a couple of orthopedic surgeons because all our patients, uh, many of our patients that we call to in Emerge at yes. night with broken hips, have dementia. It's very yeah. common. And if you have dementia, it's difficult to follow a post-operative protocol. So right. we care about dementia because it's in our patient population. And this article used a massive database oh. of, of insurance companies who are yeah. motivated to know exactly what you're taking, what your comorbid disease is in order to predict your, your premiums and your payouts and all the rest of it. And they use that data for a scientific purpose. Over 7 million people. A lot of people. So endophenotype based means it's just looking at the phenotype or what a genetic thing represents. Right. In silico is a fancy pants way of saying using a computer, basically. Yes, uh, and they, they use the insurance uh, company record data. And this is over 14 million people. Data points from it's over 14. It's, it's a big database. Which makes it a good study. Okay. So, and they tried to correlate the use of Viagra yes. with the incidence of Alzheimer's disease right. over I think it was a seven year period or something like that. And it turned out that yeah, they said, hey look, there's an association here. Right. There's an association between the people who took Viagra 
had a 69% relative risk reduction of developing Alzheimer's disease in the next during the study period. Right. Which is incredible. Right. And like we've learned before though, just because there's an association, it doesn't mean that because they took Viagra, they don't have Alzheimer's. This means there's something there. We don't know exactly the significance of it or how the other factors of their health, their lifestyle choices, their genetics, blah, 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 relate to one another. Right. So, you know, so this proves an association. Right. But even the, the authors of the article say, look, to prove cause and effect, you need a... Randomized controlled trial. I hope everyone watching said that <laughs> at the same time because we say that so much. You need yeah. a randomized controlled trial. And really the gold standard randomized control trial is double blinded placebo, placebo control. Yep. Can you double blind the taking of Viagra as a study? That'll be tricky. I don't think so. No. Placebo? Yeah. Viagra. The guys with the smile over there, they're on the treatment arm. The guys over there. And the gals Most, too, right? Gals too, yes. yes. That's important to show. In this yeah. study, they did use men and women. Yep. And well, why do women take Viagra? Well, it is also used to treat pulmonary hypertension. Yes. It's a little bit off label, but yes. there's already the drug being repurposed. Repurposed originally for blood pressure and angina, then it was repurposed to treat erectile dysfunction, then repurposed to treat pulmonary hypertension. Anything yeah. related to the vessels is probably fair game. It's about the vessels. Okay. So, so for article one says, hey, might help. There's something there. There's an association. Okay. Article two. Just wait two. for it. So now you're running to the water cooler like, hey, Bob. <laughs> the science says. I feel like I feel like you're starting to forget some stuff. Here's, <laughs> here's, a, here's a little blue pill. Oh, and make sure you got some spare time after that because you might need it. Okay. So that's the first article. The okay. second article published in Brain Communications. You get that one delivered to the house? I, I don't. I don't. Not anymore. And they don't beat around the bush in their title. The title is No Association Between Initiation of Phosphodiesterase 5 Inhibitors. Phosphodiesterase 5 Inhibitors is the class of drugs that Viagra Cialis fall under. Yep. And risk of incident Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. Results from the drug repurposing for effective Alzheimer's medication study. Wow. Beautiful acronym for that is DREAM. It's the mm. DREAM studies where they're looking, okay. actively looking to repurpose a drug to treat Alzheimer's disease. Nice. They said, hey, wait a minute. You can't include the people taking Viagra for erectile dysfunction. That's a confounding variable. Right. Because those people who are taking it maybe uh, compared to the group that don't take it for erectile dysfunction. Right might have some cognitive decline already, it might be already tipping the scale. Right, because your impotence may be related to vascular disease, which could relate to your carotid arteries, your coronary arteries, other general medical conditions, for right. sure. So these guys in the first article really tried to control for those confounding variables, yes. but the, the second article's author, this is Desai, the first article is fa Fang, so let's say Fang, Desai is saying that Fang didn't capture all the variables, so we're going to forget about erectile dysfunction and just look at a group taking Viagra for pulmonary hypertension. Okay. Men and women. And they went through it rigorously with their statisticians. I'm not a statistician. I don't even like to gamble, but I'm just saying they went through it with rigorous statisticians. Okay. And they found, no, there's no association. Okay. And they were very careful the way they worded it. They said, we could not find evidence of an association between right. the two. But because the study's not powered enough, you, they can't say and the title they say it, but they shouldn't say there is no association. Right, so when Dr. Zalza says power, it means the number of people that have to be or patients or subjects in a study has to be big enough to rule out the possibility of the outcome being related to chance. Yeah, so these guys decide in their group, in their paper, they said, we couldn't find evidence of association. Yeah. We didn't show evidence of an association. Right. And that's very different than saying we found we proved that there is no association. Right. So it's a bit ambiguous because in the title they say no association, right? They say right here, no association right. between this and this, but really they couldn't find an association. But in any case, they said there's no association. Right. So what I would say, the cool thing about both of these papers is that neither of them are run by the companies that make these pills. Right. Like no one's trying to sell yeah. these pills. These are two groups of people that are just trying to figure out the best way yeah. to deal with Alzheimer's. Yeah. And one said, hey, maybe there is something here, being hopeful. Mm -hmm. Then said, yeah, we appreciate your hope, but it looks like maybe there isn't evidence at this point. That's a good point. And right? who's funding it, right? Yeah, it's critical. Uh, and so that bias is removed because it's not being funded by the companies that make the pills, which I think are off patent now, so it'd be tough to find a company. And that's another good point. 
using this kind of data, these kind of databases are good because the databases exist. Right. To create a database like that just to look for a medical outcome would be very expensive. Yes, it's already there. <clears throat> yeah, they're using databases that, that exist. So there you go. Is there yeah. an association there? We don't know. The only way to find out, and you people watching better say this at the same time, is to do a trial. What kind of trial? A randomized control trial, okay? Yeah. There you go. So it won't be hard to find volunteers for that <laughs> randomized control trial. Probably not. Treatment arm, control arm. Yeah. yeah. Line up. I'll take it. I'll try it. I, I want to be in the treatment arm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Send it to someone that maybe already told you about the first article. Yeah. And I mean, really, this is of interest to anyone who's taking Viagra yep. or who has a family history of Alzheimer's disease <clears throat> or who is trying to find ways to prevent dementia from coming on. Yeah. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. This kind of article, this kind of like this kind of stuff's like my Viagra. Yeah. I think they should have done a randomized control trial to see if Viagra can offset the effects of eating kale. Not a chance. I I take kale versus Viagra. <laughs> <laughs>